Join us every weekend for the 2021 AFL Final Series, live on the True Footy YouTube channel. G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I'm Jesse. And I'm Drew Z. And today, we're giving you... Just, just the finals. finals tips. Nice, we did it baby. G'day guys, welcome to yet another version of Just the Tips. This time, El Finalzo Adiciono, as they say in Spain. Today, I am joined once again by young Drewzy of the Drewzy YouTube channel. And of course, co-host of the Drew Footy Show every week, where you can find the recap of the previous round. Recap, baby. So go to Drewzy's channel and check out our analysis of round 23, and that show will be continuing throughout the finals. It was a big round last round, so if you want to see our thoughts, go check it out. Nice. Drewzy, we both did pretty well in this round of footy tipping. You actually beat me again. You got eight out of a possible nine with the uh, one incorrect again, Freo. That's like the third time in a row that Freo has betrayed you uh, <laughs> footy tipping. Uh, and I got two wrong. I tip, uh, correctly tipped uh, Fremantle to lose. But I, uh, I tipped North Melbourne in an upset to beat Adelaide and that didn't quite eventuate. And then uh, you also tipped Port Adelaide to beat the Dogs and I didn't. So I did change my tip. But we'll shout out the weekly winners. And this week, it was John O'Coates with a correct tip of nine correct tips. No person did better than Jono coached this round. So congratulations, Jono. And the tipping overall leader this round is a new face this time. It's the Wing It podcast with 139 correct tips and 645 as their cumulative margin. I did go check out the Wing It podcast on YouTube. Chuck them a subscribe. So uh, nice. shout out to them. The footy season hasn't quite finished yet. We are going to be doing the tipping comp all the way through finals at the moment. But Wing It podcast gets a little shout out. Uh, they do their own podcast as well. So go check them out. And congrats, boys. And finally, the fantasy winner. And I say fantasy winner, Druzy, instead of fantasy leader, because the fantasy season has finished. So we have an overall winner. Wow. Blake Rookledge with an average of 2093 with his team, Blake's Potato Farm. It can't be too much of a potato farm if he's won the overall fantasy t uh, competition. So <laughs> congratulations, Blake. Um, we would like to give you a prize. I just haven't decided what it is yet because it kind of depends on how old this person is as well. Because, yeah. you know, I, I had something in mind, but uh, if they're real young, they're not going to like some Manscaped cologne. So, <laughs> Blake, if you're watching this video, uh, chuck us an email on uh, truefootypodcast at gmail.com. Get in touch. Uh, or you can just message us on Instagram at truefootyofficial as well. So yes. congratulations, guys. Let's get on with the tips. There we go. Actually, before the tips, we do have one more thing to say. Manscaped brings you today's Just the Tips video where you can get 20% off and free shipping on their elite male grooming products by using the code TRUEFOOTY20 all caps, all one word. They've been with us, Jersey, for about a year now, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so a great sponsor to have. Uh, great products as well. Lawnmower 4.0 has just come out. Uh, as I said before, the cologne is fantastic as well. So get yourself some nice little goodies using that discount code, and they do a great job of keeping us afloat. Make your balls look nice, boys. <laughs> I'm going to clip that and put it out of context. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's finally time to start talking about the round, Ruzi. We've yeah. got four scintillating finals coming up. Uh, it's funny that here in Perth, you know, the, the talk was, you know, finals hub. We're going to try and go to the finals all round. Yeah. Uh, all year. And, you know, no finals in week one. And I honestly don't think we'll get yeah. a single final at this rate. And Hobart, uh, not even Hobart, Launceston has pipped us for two finals this round. Launceston. Yeah, even I think Tasmanians are a bit uh, mad. But judging on my comments, that um, they don't get any in Hobart, which is the capital but Launceston yeah. gets two. So, interesting times there. I think the Doggies uh, couldn't have the choice of Adelaide Oval because they couldn't have three games yeah, there in a round. Okay. Um, so, they've chosen Hobart, and I guess Perth's not a viable I'm option. I'm pissed off at Mark McGowan for this. We could have had so many sick games in the best stadium in Australia. The key we word was sick games. COVID is a threat. <laughs> but that was like literally the goal of building Perth Stadium. I know this isn't really football talk, but like when they build Perth Stadium, they're like, yeah, we want to have a grand final here. You're given the opportunity, and you're just being an absolute... Twat about it. I like Mark McGowan, but come on, yeah, I love yeah. my football even more. Yeah. Let's have the grand final. I do wonder if this comes to a good time for the AFL because uh, I've done a recent, re uh, recent video on Tasmania's bid to become an AFL club, and they they're upset with with the AFL wanting to send over you know a North Melbourne um, as their preferred option, or for example, North Melbourne. It could be another team like St Kilda or whatever. Um, their, their fans are going to hate me, so <laughs> that. but that is the that is what was um, recommended. And the Tasmanian Premier has threatened to pull out games uh, of Tasmania from next year with North Melbourne and Hawthorne games. So this is like a little bit of a, maybe a bit of a peace offering from the AFL, offering them two finals now, um, which is pretty good for sport in Tasmania. Wait, so the Premier saying no more games there because they haven't had an AFL team? Uh, they're threatening it if the AFL don't make a decision. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So if you want more details on that, go check out my video. Tasmania's bid to become an AFL team. Nice. Let's get into the tips. The first final. 
Uh, much like last year, Port Adelaide is hosting Geelong at the Adelaide Oval. Last week, the power overcame the dogs at Marvel Stadium in a game where you know people were criticising the power's ability to beat teams um, higher than them on the ladder. And the Bulldogs, you know, have been a premiership contender or premiership fancy all year, and the power got the job done. It may not have been the most uh, pretty, con- yeah, pretty or convincing, uh, certainly from the Bulldogs' perspective, game. But the power have non- nonetheless secure top two. They're looking pretty good and they're definitely going to be dangerous at home. You had Boak and Wines, typical, they were huge in the middle and hit the scoreboard. And when you got a player like Robbie Gray taking a shot, you know, with um, in the dying minutes to put your team in front, you, you just know he's going to keep Yeah, 100%. By contrast, the Cats blew a 44-point lead against Melbourne in uh, what was a really disappointing loss. In the, in the scheme of things, they, they only slipped down to third and they do have an away final here, So, but it's not like it cost them top four like the Bulldogs, but still, I guess the, the mental side of things yeah. of Geelong blowing that, their confidence must have taken a hit with no buyer to refresh as well. Hawkins kicked four goals, Guthrie was and Selwood were productive in the middle, but ultimately it wasn't enough. They couldn't stop a rampa- rampaging Melbourne side. Last time these two sides met, the Cats uh, did beat the Power in uh, Adelaide earlier this year, but yep. in the final last year, Port Adelaide got the chocolate. Mm-hmm. So, uh, on the form lines, it's not really too clear who's going to win this game. I feel like Port might have come good at the right time. I think they're healthier than they've been in uh, previous parts of this season, and Geelong are stuttering. How do you see this game going? I am going to tip Geelong to win this game, just straight off the bat. And I just think because... Geelong have had a few disappointing results in the last month. Like, at some point, they're going to have to click into gear, and what better time to secure a home preliminary final, wherever it's going to be, beating Port Adelaide in uh, Adelaide. That first game they had at Adelaide over earlier in the season, I tipped Port Adelaide, and Geelong just genuinely outclassed them. I don't think Port... This could come back to bite me. I don't think they really have what it takes to consistently beat the top sides every week. They beat the Bulldogs last week. I don't think they're just very clean. I don't think their system is just like bang, 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 which when you see Geelong, they're one-on-one. They will just get a clearance, get it to a one-on-one, and then a couple chain handballs, and then it results in a goal. So I reckon Geelong are a lot more threatening uh, at goal. Obviously, they're going to have to do it in a very hostile crowd in uh, Port Adelaide. So it's going to be harder for them, but they've done it already this season. They can do it again. I'm going to tip them to win this one, Jesse. I'm going to tip Geelong to win. Fancy to say, it's so hard to tip in finals because you're just looking at all good teams. Obviously, I'll tip Geelong to win by uh, three goals. I can see any possible outcome. I can yeah. see Port thrashing them. I can see Geelong thrashing them, and I can see it being close either way. I'm gonna edge with Port here. Uh, nice. Mostly just a bit of a gut feel. Home crowd uh, in an electric finals atmosphere. They're used to playing finals. They've got an experienced team um, in terms of finals with a lot of guys there played um, several final series. Went pretty deep last year. They won the final last year. I think they'll repeat history and win narrowly. So uh, mm. it's my head. I do think Geelong is better. But Port Adelaide did go 17-5 and five this year. And most 17-5 yeah. te- and five teams generally win the flag. And their record against the top teams is what is their Achilles heel. I don't but- even think they were that good against the Bulldogs. Hey? I thought the Bulldogs mm. were just average. Like They looked so flat, the Bulldogs. Port had so many skill errors and whatnot, they can't afford to do that against the Cats. I think the Cats looked really good against Melbourne before just like a massive momentum swing that uh, just fate had them lose that game. So I reckon Geelong are pretty much there or thereabouts where they need to be. And Mm. um, yeah, I think Port just weren't very convincing. As harsh as that is to say, because they beat the Bulldogs, but the Bulldogs aren't in good form and yet, yeah, scraped a win. Kicked one goal in that first half. Can't be doing that against the Cats. I agree with everything you said. Um, I can't really fault it. I just think the home crowd will whip them yeah. over the line. That's just my surprise tip, although I think Port are actually favourites. Yeah. So, yeah, Port Adelaide win by eight points. The second final, and the, I don't know if it's the first or second elimination final, but Sydney will be playing the Giants at UTAS, which is Launceston, as we discussed previously. This is the third time these Sydney teams have faced off in a final once in 2016 and I believe in 2018's elimination final as well. Uh, I got corrected in the comments. I forgot about the 2018 one. So this is the third time. It's crazy to think that the Eagles and Dockers have been in the competition at the same time for 26 years. Mm. Never played in a final. Yeah. South Australia's had one derby in a final and we have had 
uh, zero, and you know Sydney's got three, so it's pretty interesting. And the Giants are two and zero against them in finals. So a, a free just on that point, a free versus West Coast final would make me like absolutely hate my life, or mm. just n- never leave Cloud Nine ever. Mm. You'd be able to hang your hat right on that one. I think we would. I would dread it because the Eagles wouldn't have much to to gain from it. You know, we've already won more derbies, more premierships. We already have the bragging rights. But if Freo peep up, peep us in a final, yeah. Better, uh, you know, like the biggest game between us ever. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we'll talk about this game. <laughs> um, the Swans touched up the Suns, um, gross by eighty-seven points. <laughs> um, absolutely flogged them in. It was a game that there was. It was a little bit of a question about it because of Gold Coast seemed to beat Sydney for some reason, mm. um, and certainly did so earlier in the year. Buddy kicked six. Heaney and Papley kicked three each, and all of those players are going to be big. Uh, X Factor players in this final series, particularly Buddy Franklin. It's his mm. first final series in three years. The Giants outlasted the Blues by 14 points to secure a top eight spot. Uh, Hogan kicked three, just earned himself another one year contract, which I'm sure you're stoked with. And Taranto, um, you know, kicked four goals last week, turned that into four behinds this week, <laughs> but was still, you know, still a dangerous player, still very talented. Even spread. In terms of results this season, they've obviously played each other twice and split it one and one. Uh, Sydney winning the more recent one by six or seven goals, I think. With everything you've seen so far and the form lines of these two teams, how do you see this final going? I think Sydney can win this game. I think GWS can win this game. Analysis. <laughs> yeah, that last derby between these two sides, GWS were up by like 35 points in the second quarter and then Sydney just flipped mm. the, the script on that game and just steamed home and ended up winning comfortably, which I couldn't believe. I think Sydney's best football this year has been better than GWS's. GWS have been up and down all season long. Haven't been beating the best... Uh, I mean, they have been beating the best sides. They haven't been at their best against the worst sides. So now that they're in finals, they probably feel a little bit more comfortable that a North Melbourne's not going to draw with them or uh, Hawthorne's <laughs> going to beat them. We're safe now. We're in finals. But yeah, you mentioned there Sydney's goal kickers, Buddy Franklin, obviously. Oh, that's a lot of bird flap. <laughs> I did not mean that to sound that far. <laughs> We've got a bird doing the splits over there. <laughs> Buddy, one of the all time greats. Papley, probably the best small forward in the competition on his day. Uh, Toby Green. Yeah, Toby Green, yes, also. Um, and Heaney has been really good in the last month or so as well. So, um, very good, very good. But the, the Giants' defense could match up very well because they, the defense is very solid that's how football works against good sides um, I will tip Sydney though I'm going to mm. tip Sydney to win this game I think they deserve to go through with the season that they've had been more consistent all year they're the highest seed side here I'm going to tip Sydney to win by this be a close game 13 points mm. Yeah, I think uh, the safe logic is Sydney are the better team. They should win. Um, when you look at it in hindsight, some of their best wins this year now don't look as hot. And I don't really mean to make that point as though Sydney's not that good. But remember that 45-point win over Richmond, and Richmond misses the finals badly. Uh, who else did they beat? They beat the Bulldogs as well. Brisbane. And, and yeah, the Dogs have kind of... Geelong. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's going to be hard to edit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe I'm talking a bit of shit there. I do think Sydney have been very good this season. They have won 15 games. And 15 games won Richmond the Premiership in 2017 and the same with the Bulldogs the year before as that as, as well. So um, a very, very strong sixth place side. And uh, they've been on the road for this whole year. So it doesn't yeah. really matter where this game's played. And I think, I think Sydney lost their home derby earlier this year anyway so the thing is with the Giants though you just got to rate their star power no, nobody really fancied them in 2019 because they were they finished sixth that year and won three upset finals to make it this year and that, a lot of that team is still there yeah. but to be fair I think in 2019 the home away season they were generally a better side than they are now mm. as well so there's looking at all that roundabout logic I'm going to circle <laughs> back and say I think Sydney will win this yeah. um, but I think this is the upset of the round I think this is the most potential yeah, I don't think it'd be much of an upset. I think Sydney are a little bit better, but obviously GWS can win because they did in that first derby. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. I think Sydney will win by. I think if they win and show up, they'll win by like six goals. Mm. But I can also see GWS winning, so I'll say Sydney by six goals. <laughs> Move on to the third game of this final series. Wow. Melbourne is hosting Brisbane at Adelaide Oval. They've opted for. Um, My mouth is watering. Yeah, right. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> Demons obviously coming off a heroic comeback last week. Um, to Yeah, we talked about it heaps on the Drew Footy Show and, and also on my channel as well. That was one of the most incredible ways to finish the season I've ever seen, mm-hmm. to clinch the minor premiership in such dramatic fashion. They will have heaps of confidence, but I made the observation as well, they could have the opposite effect where there could be a sense of, you know, when a team sort of has a massive win, they don't really show up the next week. I think Fremantle has been a great example of that. But I also think uh, Melbourne have been the best side this year. I've been pretty consistent. 
consistent on that. So it'll be interesting to see how they show up to this game. Uh, Brisbane, on the other hand, had their own dramatic win. Um, obviously, they beat the Eagles pretty easily, but as we all know, the percentage was pretty dicey there, and it came down to the last 15 seconds of the game before they secured top four. Danaher kicked fourth. That's one player that the Lions haven't had in their previous you know, finals campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, so he adds a different sort of point of difference in their attack. And I thought Daniel Rich was really, really yeah. uh, dominant for the Lions. We didn't really uh, give him too much pressure. He kind of just tore us up. And Zorko and Neil are other really experienced campaigners in that team. Zorko must be one of the most underrated players in the league. Hey, he makes all Australian every, every year and mm. he's talked about, but he's actually like a top 10 player in the comp, I reckon. Mm, be cool. Last time these two sides met, it was in Sydney at Giant mm. Stadium, and Melbourne got the job done. Uh, but this is a new random venue, and it's hard to pick. You know who's going to be better. I think Melbourne are one and one this year at Adelaide Oval, losing to Adelaide and beating the better team in Port. Mm -hmm. uh, and Brisbane had one uh, task there, beating Adelaide there, and won by about ten goals. Although <laughs> it was a pretty good game. Who wins this ginormous clash? The point of questioning Melbourne's hunger to come back after such a big win, I think, is invalid. I think the I think the culture that is building at Melbourne at the moment is based on just consistency, consistently showing up every week and digging deep. So I don't think they're going to have a, any issue with showing up this week at all. I think they're going to be in this game until the last quarter. Brisbane smacking teams for fun at the moment. Smack, mm. smack, beating Freer by heaps, beating Collingwood by heaps, and then just, well, not making light work of the Eagles, but did what they had to do. Earlier in the season when they met, uh, Brisbane were leading in the first half by three goals. Remember, you come into my stream and you were like, ha ha! And then, yeah. Uh, that was only because you gave me shit for tipping them and they were in front of yeah. half time, so I had to capitalise. Yeah, that's how I remember that game. And I also remember Clay Oliver being quiet in that first half. He's going to be the point of difference in this game. It's a battle of two of the best midfields in the comp, just about. That is a magpie making a nest. Hmm. I'm not happy about that. <laughs> I'm going to get swooped at some point in the next two weeks. Anyway, Look at those huge bird flaps. <laughs> I reckon Melbourne get on top of the the middle battle because Gorn is a, the best ruckman in the competition So and he can contribute at ground level better than the big O. I want to tip Melbourne to win this game, progress to a prelim, best side in the comp for most of the season. It's going to be a great game though. I'm going to tip Melbourne to win by 10 points. Uh, just on the point of their culture, I wasn't just to clarify, I wasn't sort of questioning Melbourne's culture specifically. I just think it's a common thing in football yeah. where you have a heroic win and you don't show up the next week. Um, it does happen. Um, and, you know, Melbourne players like Petrarca were literally in tears at the end of the mm. game. So I'm just saying that's a that's something to watch because if they don't show up in this game, I reckon that will be why. Yeah. That being said, I am still tipping Melbourne for the flag and I'm tipping them to win this game. Uh, I think they're the better side, but Brisbane, um, very, very good side. So I'm not mm. surprised either way, but I'll, I'll say Melbourne win this by 14. The final game of the round, back to Launceston down in Tasmania. We've got the Bulldogs hosting Essendon. The Dogs have lost three on the trot jersey and we've, we've been talking at pains about how uh, flat and average they're looking and Bontempelli is the player I've talked up all season he had another quiet game with just 15 possessions and he's the man they need to lift right now and potentially we're going to see that in the finals but it's going to need to come quick and it must be so deflating for them to miss out on the double chance yeah. um, it's, a it's a feat they never even achieved when they won the flag you know, yeah. it's, it's something that's eluded the dogs um, so to, to fall out in that fashion must be really really disappointing Essendon on the other hand proved far too good for the young Magpies side they already had finals locked up um, so it was just a bit of a, uh, a formality that game but nonetheless they got the job done and Peter Wright in particular is one player I'm watching uh, mm. with keen interest this final series needing a big tall key forward uh, target I think Essendon have needed over the last few years and he's emerged in the last three weeks and kicked seven against this exact mob last time they met and of course Essendon yeah. only beat the dogs a few weeks ago so the psychological edge that they might have going into this game uh, could be significant the Bulldogs are ranked second for clearances this year, but this has just kind of completely left them. Last time they played Essendon, Essendon won the clearances 47-31, to 31, and we've got some gun midfielders in that team, like uh, Merritt and Parrish in particular, um, who were not going to make it easy for the Dogs midfielders. The Dogs also lost the clearances against Port Adelaide, so something that was once a strength for them has, uh, has left them, and it could be form, it could also be, you know, Team English spending a bit of time forward. I'm not too sure, but either way, they look flat. Do they come into this final series snapping back into form, or how do you see it going? I reckon they're a bit flat at the moment, and I think you've nailed it on that head there with Team English. Um, I think he's literally the reason, since Josh Bruce has gone down, they've needed another key tall forward, and they've put Tim English in there, and I, I don't know why they don't just chuck Hannon forward and put Tim English in the rock. Like That just doesn't make much sense to me. 
I'll put it out there that I'm going to tip the Bulldogs in this game, but I can't make a case against Essendon winning this game. They beat them three weeks ago. Their midfield's been on top. They dominated Collingwood. Yeah, beat the, beat the Dogs three weeks ago. So they're going to be, yeah, really keen for this game. Jake Stringer's had a really good season as well. Their midfield's been great every week. They've found a lot of avenues to go. I, yeah, I'm very impressed with Essendon. Only good things to say. And for the Dogs, they're, yeah, their forward line isn't clicking at all. I think they've got a lot of individuals in that side that click at times. And when they do, it's it's gorgeous football. But when they don't, it's just disjointed and they, they have a hard time progressing the ball up the ground. So uh, I'm, I'm, having said only positive things about Essendon and negative things about the Bulldogs, I will tip the Bulldogs just uh, because they're, I think they are a better they do have a better list and a better side. I do like the, the culture that's being brewed at Essendon through Dyson Heppel in particular as a captain. I'm a big fan of his leadership style. So you said that la- the Sydney Derby was your upset of the round. This is my upset of the round. I yeah, reckon. I think you could probably say either of these yeah. conceivably, to be honest. Yeah, but considering where Essendon have come from this season, just to get into the eight in the final round, and the Dogs probably could have finished on the top of the ladder if they, cont- if they continued the form that they had all season and they slipped. Form lines are trending like... And, uh, yeah, Essendon won the last outing. I'd be a smart man to tip Essendon, but I'm not a smart man. <laughs> so I'm going to tip the Bulldogs to win this one, just for the, yeah, they're a better side. Well, they have been all season. So I'll tip the Bulldogs to win this one. If they click into gear and play the way we know, I reckon they can win this by 29 points. If the Bulldogs get eliminated in week one of this final series after being top of the ladder two weeks ago, or what, three weeks ago, mm. that would probably be the most disappointing finish to a season yeah. I've ever seen. And yeah. I might make a video about that. Mine. <laughs> Rats. Um, I have not done any research in making this point, so let me get slaughtered if I get it wrong. But I reckon, if you look back, there's probably been a few occasions where a team has beaten a team late in the season than they've met in week one of the finals, and the f- opposite result has occurred. Mm. I remember that GWS and the Bulldogs did it a few years ago, and I reckon it's happened a bit more than that since. Uh, I think the Dogs... It's a new season. The Dogs will snap yeah. into gear. I think they'll win this game. And I think if they do show up, they'll win by 28 points. Snap into gear like Ben Cousins. Ah, come on, man. He's got his life on track. <laughs> all right, guys, that is it for all of our tips for this round. We, of course, will be continuing this series throughout the final series. So we'll be back next week with both just the tips, or just the finals tips, as I should say, yes. and the Drew Footy finals show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks again for all your support this year. Please stay with us for this last month of the season. We're going to be doing live streams pretty much on both of our channels for the rest of the season, but also more content than you can possibly juggle. Mm. I'm tired. (laughs) Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye!